If you want to be part of the kingdom of God and you want to be part of the ministry of Jesus, you will be a peacemaker. To be a peacemaker is to be Pablo. With the hand of God inside. Shall we pray? Because we could go home now. <laughs> we could be done. Because that's it. I was thinking, what else could I do to help you to see this? And, and maybe I'll use my vacuum cleaner. In, in your mind, I've got a vacuum cleaner at home. And, and, and if it's not plugged in, it, 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 it just doesn't suck. You know, you really want your vacuum cleaner to suck. You really do. If it doesn't, like the vacuum cleaner I found at church this week, yeah, our vacuum cleaner just wasn't working. So I turned it upside down and I found by opening up and taking off the bottom piece that the belt was broken. You can have it plugged in, but if you don't have a connection between the motor and the brushes, it's not going to suck up the dirt. It's just not going to work nearly as well. So you see, it takes a connection. It takes a connection. If the, if the vacuum cleaner is not plugged in, it's not going to work. If you are not plugged in, you are not going to work. If the hand of God is not inside of you, motating you. Now I wonder, did Pablo have little, little pinky finger arms? He didn't have those? Okay, well I've had puppets that, you know, if you go like this, you know, hang loose. You know, if you go like this, then you can do the hands and, and, and this is the head. So you can have fun with puppets, but I, where, where is he? My, my little friend. He, he, he was up here. He said it right. I know how that puppet works. It's because your hand is inside moving. <laughs> he, he got it. The kids got it. So I hope, I hope that you get it too. That the fact that God lives in you, that God says, I will come, I will uh, control you can, uh, do we like that word? I, I don't know. Do you like that? I, I, it's hard for me. Okay, I don't know if it's hard for you, but it's hard for me to say, God, take control of my life. Be the power source of my life. Today's part in this series that we've been doing on the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5 is peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Now, I have to give credit where credit is due. I learned this from another pastor friend of mine, so it's not my own thought. But the idea behind peace is healing. The healing together. Uh, shout out to my daughter and my son-in-law who are regularly watching us from Calgary, Canada, Calgary, uh, Alberta. Uh, they sent me a nice mug. It's a big one. I like that. Gets me more tea in the morning. But in the process of sending it, the handle broke. Good thing I have Gorilla Glue. <laughs> and I'm a fix-it kind of guy. So I have my mug in the morning, and the handle is on. Yeah, there's a little bit of glue around the edges, but it works. It works. I healed the handle back onto the mug. There is now peace between the handle and the mug. I want you to think of the name that you give for Jesus. We talk about this at Christmas time a lot. He is the Prince of? Peace. Thank you. You just said in one word, you just said his entire mission. This is the mission that God sends Jesus on to perform for him as a, a way of bringing us back and healing us back together with God. Amen. That's the entire mission. That's the good news. That's the good news in a nutshell right here. I mean, we've been going through blessed are the meek, blessed are those who mourn. Okay, now, now as people who have connected ourselves or desire connection with God, he is saying, blessed are the peacemakers. You see, the other part about Jesus is that he is also the creator. 
So you could say, blessed are those who are interested in creating peace, are interested in creating a rebonding between humanity and its creator. Our creator God desires to be back with us, and so we are called in this beatitude, we are called to be links in the chain Person to person to person to person. We're called to be links in that chain to heal the human family back to God. Because let's not forget John 3.16. It's the whole world, my friends. I think it was shocking for Nicodemus to hear that because, of course, Nicodemus was a member of the Sanhedrin, the ruling body of the people of God. And they felt that what God had to say was for them, and it was then for them to be able to tell the rest of the world. But the fact was, they had not been telling the rest of the world. They had been keeping things to themselves. So when Jesus just puts this on blast and says, the whole world, the whole world, Nicodemus, I mean, we're talking the Romans too. Oh, you didn't just say the Romans. Yes, the Romans too. The whole world. He loves the whole world. Don't you like it when Jesus uh, points to the centurion who has just told him how things work in his world and has said, Jesus, I know that these same things work in your world where uh, you know, when you say that this person is healed, he will be healed. Just like I say to one of my men, go and he goes. Or come and he comes. And Jesus turns to the, the people who were supposed to understand and says, you know what, I have not found such great faith. I have not found such great understanding in all of Israel. Ooh, wow, that's a slam. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who would like to create peace, who, would, who, who want to foment for fellowship with God. Okay, And this doesn't mean just on Sabbath or Sunday or any other time that you choose to go to church. If, 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 I'm a shout out to my Muslim brothers and sisters. On Friday, okay, if you are a peace-loving person because you love God who is the creator of peace, then you will want to be a peacemaker. And to be a peacemaker means that you're interested in creating harmonious fellowship with God and with humanity. I like, I like the cross for that reason, because you see, there's a vertical in the cross and there's a horizontal in the cross. And Jesus came and he became that, that bridge between humanity and God. He heals us back to God, but then he also says, I'm going to reach out. And then he says, come follow me. Come be a peacemaker with me. I am reminded too of when Jesus was young and uh, uh, he says to his mom, uh, don't you want me to be about my father's business? This is his father's business. This is the very self-same business that God is involved in today as he was in Jesus' day. And so if we choose to be part of that business, if we choose to be a son, daughter of God connected, we become peacemakers. We are going to be interested in how our fellow human beings are potentially disconnected from God. And we're going to be interested in those ways that we can interact with them in this world today in bringing them back and healing. That's the synonym, if you want to think of that connecting word that is the synonym for peace. Peace is healing them back together with God. Now, many people have a picture of God that is quite disturbing. So the, the trick here, or I don't want to say it's a trick, but the, the thing that we have to remember is that as we are representing God, as we are wanting to be peacemakers, we have to understand that that not everybody may have the same picture of God as we do. 
So here we are trying to bring people into a closer relationship with God and, and, and maybe the God that they know is, is awful and terrible and nasty and, 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 and just really wants to punish all the time and they don't have any sort of feeling of love from this God that they know. Maybe it's because of their family background. Maybe it's because of their church background. Maybe it's because they have never had a background with a relationship with God. So please, as we... Go forth this week and, and, and into the rest of your life. If you're wanting to be a peacemaker, understand that you're going to have to work with individuals that have different pictures of God. He, he has solved this problem. Do you, do you know how Jesus solves this problem? He makes each of us into Pablo. So it could be that there was somebody else who tried with this individual that maybe you have in your mind, they tried to help them and it just didn't work because that particular picture didn't work. So I don't want to criticize previous people in, in your life or in someone else's life who have tried to introduce you or someone else to God. I don't want to criticize that, but I'm going to say sometimes it just doesn't, it doesn't work, it doesn't connect. But it may be that you and your face and your picture of God and your relationship that you have with these individuals will suddenly turn on the light bulb in this person's mind to say, well, if God is like that person, then I want to be connected to that God. You see how that makes us accountable in many ways to, to our witness we need to be sure that our witness is properly representing God, properly representing the God of the Bible, properly representing the love that he came to show planet Earth. So therefore, there is no room for, uh, in, in the healing process for, for condemnation and for judgment. It just isn't our place. Our place is to, to tell people that there is a God who loves them. There is a God who, who wants very much to be together with them, to have fellowship with them, not only in heaven someday, but also right now. I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. I feel sorry for those folks who don't have Jesus in their life. You know why? Because they think that they have to take care of themselves. And how's that working out for them? So many people with their eyes, their, their eyebrows knit together every morning at work. And my friends, it's not because they haven't had their coffee. They have two or three cups of coffee and their eyebrows are still knit together like this with the problems that are coming down upon them in their life. And, it, and when you see that, my friends, just realize these are the individuals that God has called you to, to say, look, there is a God who loves you and who would like to walk with you in this life. Not just in the life to come, but in this life to walk you through the valley of the shadow of death and to make your life abundantly joyful. I don't know. Uh, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> it sounds pretty good to me. That's why I'm saying I'm, I, I feel sorry for the, you know, I could do Mr. T for you, but that, that might be somewhat sacrilegious. I feel sorry for the fool, you know, that, that, you know, decides they don't want, they don't want what God has to offer. They don't want that hand in their, in their business. They want to move and, and think that they can do it all themselves. It's sad. It's sad. Uh, uh, I don't know if that's been your experience, but uh, uh, when Brett mentioned this morning that he wasn't feeling feeling Psalm 26 as something that he could say himself, Oh Lord, I have lived a blameless life. <laughs> I told him, me neither. This is this is David. This is David saying, God, uh, I've I've really done everything I know to do. But did that make David blameless? Did that make him perfect? No. No, it did not. But he's imploring, he's imploring God to search him and try him 
and, and be a part of his life and lead him so that he will get what I believe that all of us are interested in in the end, and that is, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what David wants. That's what he's saying here. God, I've lived that kind of life. You know I have. Test me, try me. But you know, then there are other Psalms. Just remember that David says, you know what? I have really, really messed up. So this must have been a good day for David. He, he must have had his Xanax and, and he was feeling good. Okay, And so he was ready to talk to God about all the good stuff in his life and how God needed him. But I tell you what, David definitely was interested in being connected to God and being a peacemaker. The Beatitudes don't end there, though. Okay, uh, They go on to the last bit. And, and the last bit is much more disturbing. But it is my lot as, as a preacher of the Word of God to not just tell you some of the Word, but to tell you all of the Word. Because it does say that there will be those who, if they choose to follow the righteous one, that they will be persecuted, there will be forces that will come against you that will try to stop what you are doing if you choose to be a peacemaker, if you choose to be meek, if you choose to have the perspective that God is in control and that he is definitely in control of your life, you're going to be the Pablo. If you choose to be the, the Pablo where God is moving you and you are allowing him to move you, there are going to be people who think you're crazy. And they're going to want to sideline you and they're going to want to sideline your perspective But we are going to be persecuted, if you want to use that very harsh word. It's the word of Scripture. We're going to be persecuted by people who <coughs> despised Jesus. People who rejected Jesus. People who use a, a word that comes up in talk about cancer. You'll hear it, the word malignant. Well, it's in the same word that I'm going to use now. There are going to be people who will malign. The G is silent, but they will malign you. It's, it's talking evil about you with evil intent. When my father contracted cancer and I first heard that word malignant, I, I now came to a new understanding of the intent of cancer. It is to maim and to kill. It is malignant. Jesus had people whose attitude towards him was to maim and to kill, especially after he resurrected Lazarus. And then they put Lazarus on the hit list too. So because of being Jesus' friend, Lazarus gets put on the hit list. Just want to tell you, this is why I'm saying this is one of the harder things to, to teach is the fact that if you choose, if you choose to be connected to the creator God of this world, to the Savior, Jesus Christ, if you choose that, my friends, you are going to be persecuted by those who choose not to be connected, who choose to be connected with the other power source in our world today. We could talk all about him, but he gets enough airtime on television every week. Therefore, I'm not going to talk about him today. When you have Jesus in your heart and your soul as a representative, as an associate of Jesus Christ, you will have forces come up against you, and you may not know them, but they are in your life today. For so they persecuted they persecuted the prophets who were before you. What were the prophets? Who were the prophets? These are individuals whom God has spoken directly to in some cases or given visions to. And, and, and would we not say that maybe as an entire church, as an entire grouping, the Seventh-day Adventist people believe that God has spoken to us? We claim the, the ministry of, of a certain Ellen White. 
And there are others who have come along and been helpful. We believe Joel, who says that in the last days that there will be maidens and young men who will have visions, will give us words from the Lord. These are individuals who are connected. Now, we can say, I say this, that I can be just as connected to the Holy Spirit as Ellen White was. Do you believe that? We have access to the Holy Spirit just as much as Ellen did. Now, whether or not the Holy Spirit chooses to have the same kind of relationship with us as he did with her is his business. However, however, we can put ourselves at his disposal and see what happens. I dare you. No, no, no. I double dog dare you. See what happens. Just say, God... I'm going to be Pablo this week. I, I'm, I'm going to let you use me. I'm going to be listening for what you have to say to me. Uh, and, and if it's something I need to do, I'll do it. If it's something I need to say, I'll say it. When we love Jesus, we will have people and we will have other forces that will come against us. The problem with this is that we're going to feel a bit like a sore thumb. You know that phrase, a sore thumb, uh, usually I think came for carpenters, so maybe it's a good thing to talk about because Jesus was a carpenter, but you know, when you hit your thumb with a hammer, it hurts. When, when you stick up, when the scythe of life is coming through, you are the one who is going to get hit. The, the, the natural response is going to be that when, like the Hebrew worthies of old, when the music is played and the command is given to bow down, the natural human response, peer pressure included, is going to be to bow down. So it's going to be difficult, my friends, this week to tell you that you're going to need to stand up. You're going to need to stand up. Maybe be the only three that stand up. I don't know where Daniel was at this time, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were standing up when King Nebuchadnezzar said, bow down. And they were willing, they were willing to go wherever it took them as a, as a result. So I don't know what this week is going to hold for you. I don't know maybe what has been happening. Maybe you're saying he is preaching to me today because this has been a terrible last week or maybe a terrible month so far. I mean, look at it. It's almost the end of January 2018. Whoosh! Man, it goes by so fast. You look back and you say, well, how was my January? I, 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 here comes February and I don't even remember how January went. But I do know this, the Holy Spirit is interested in connecting with you to help you to be a peacemaker in this world that is torn daily, even in these United States, by actions of various individuals. We just get to see some stuff on TV. That, by the way, is because somebody in that network chose to put that on TV. Just remember that. There's a bunch of other stuff that has to do with what the kingdom of heaven is interested in, and that doesn't usually make it onto TV. Okay? But there is persecution, there is persecution, you could say, that is going on uh, in, in this country where, um, I, I've said this to some of our leaders, I'm going to say it to all of you, you may be helping somebody, and you may get in trouble for it. I heard recently that if you are uh, looking after your neighbor and they come to depend upon you. If, uh, if you move away, you better tell social services. Because if they say, oh, I was getting my help from this individual and I had come to depend on this individual, they may come looking for you because you have abandoned them. Okay? So you could get in trouble for abandoning the person that you were helping in the name of Jesus. 
and they have come to depend on you, and the social society has come to depend on you helping that person. Interesting how that works, eh? They want to claim, they want to claim the good works of, of those who love people, and then they want to punish those people if they stop doing it. You may stick up this week, and you may be a sore thumb, but so was Jesus. This is what he did. This is what he did to maintain his integrity. He talked to his heavenly father every day. He said, I don't do anything except that my heavenly father tells me to do it. He was a Pablo. Okay. Uh, The one that comes to mind really quickly is the woman at the well. Woman at the well was at at, at a place in Israel where Jesus could have passed through on his way from Jerusalem to Nazareth because that's where he was going. He was going back up to Galilee. He could have gone via the Jordan. He could have gone via the the sea, the coast. But I believe his heavenly father said, go up the middle. I have somebody I want you to meet at the well. So there's Jesus sending his disciples off into Sychar to get extra food, and he sits there. He's waiting for that appointment because Jesus is in connection with his heavenly father. So when that lady shows up, Jesus is there. Each of us, I believe, can have these kinds of what we call divine appointments if we so choose. Jesus had them because his regular protocol was to stay connected. I call it daily bread. Jesus calls himself the living bread. If you want to eat, if you want to be strengthened, if you want to know what's going to happen today, because you see, the Bible says daily bread. Not weekly, not monthly, not yearly. He's not going to tell you in advance. So when you wake up before your feet hit the floor, please ask Jesus, what is my daily bread today? What is your instruction for me today? Because that's all he's going to tell you. That's all Jesus was told himself, I believe, when he was here on earth. So every day he prayed and he connected. I think, too, that he looked for, he looked for the people visually that he could identify as being connected to his heavenly father. He looked for those individuals. He even chose 12 of them. Well, 11. Didn't they bring Judas to him? Yes. But then he accepted that. Okay. But he chose people Because he said, I will make you fishers of men. I will work within you to make a change in your life. But he chose those individuals because he was led to do so. I think that as we go throughout life, we too can see in people's faces and in their lives individuals who we can connect with, not only for ministry's sake, but also to build them up and to bring peace into their lives. I think too that that we can all cultivate the still small voice. So we have, we have daily bread, his words. We have his looking for his face in those around us, looking for the face of God, and then listening. So what, is, what does it take to really, really listen? Well, I'll tell you what we do these days, right? We put earbuds in. If you really, really want to listen to that telephone call and you're on a commuter train and everybody's talking around you, If you really want to hear that call, you put in earphones. So that's the new way that we are very, very specific about who we want to listen to and that we only want to listen to them. So I don't know what you have to do in your life to deaden all the other distractions. I'm being very general because each of us is different, but each of us has the same problem. We need to be hearing from God. And so whatever it takes... For you to to be in a quiet place, or if it's if you're in a noisy place, and you're you, you you're putting in the earbuds and you're and you're listening carefully, quietly, maybe through the ministry of music. Again, I want to thank all the teens that we have that on Sabbath morning create that environment, create that ambiance. It's not by mistake that we do this, folks. We have a postlude coming up after I'm done. It's not by mistake that we do that. We are trying to give you an opportunity to just sit and be and listen to what it is that God is saying to you. Not just me, 
I hope that what I say to you is what God wants you to hear, but I also want God to speak directly to you. So do whatever it takes to have time every day to hear what God has to say to you. That lovely lady, Ellen, used to say, you need to take an hour, an hour in your day. Uh, 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 Luther said, uh, I was trying an hour and it wasn't enough. So he started getting up even earlier in the morning and he would spend three or four hours. Mother Teresa spent the entire morning praying to God. And then she said, I go out into the gutters of Calcutta and I look for him. See how that works? Pablo. Thank you. Great children's story. Worked really well for me too. (laughs) Daily bread, visual connection, hearing. This, I believe, is what gave Jesus the power to withstand the persecution that came his way. And now he is telling us in his opening sermon to the entire universe, it's going to happen to you too if you follow me. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be loneliness. There's going to be difficulty. But we can find solace when we gather together in places like this. I really hope, as your, as your pastor, I, I really hope that every time you come and visit here, that you will know that this is a place of like-minded believers who first of all believe in Jesus Christ, who second of all uh, believe that his peace can be infused into our lives, that if we say yes to Jesus, we hear his voice, we move forward in his power, and that those around us know that we are Christ followers, Christians, by the love that we show to them. Great song, isn't it? Know that we are Christians by our love. Jesus says, blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness sake. Blessed is Jesus. He was persecuted for righteousness sake. Blessed are you when you believe that God is telling the truth and that the truth is Jesus. Blessed are you when you are loyal to your Creator. There's a lot of people who are looking for this kind of life, my friends, and and they're looking in all kinds of different places. This week, your determination can be that I would like to be a peacemaker. You want to be a peacemaker with me? I want to be a peacemaker. I want to help heal people back together with God this week. Amen? Amen? Amen.